this episode of the Better Health Podcast, join parents Karabo Mokwena and Yarius Lodovic as they embark on a compelling journey on the complexities of navigating mental health as parents. What things did you embark on that really was things that helped you among, amongst your journey as a, as a mom? I think social media, Yarius. Oh. Social media has been my Amazing. bestie. Um, I think it's... There's so many beautiful, um, powerful platforms that can help us really connect mm. because that's what uh, made me create the platform in oh, the first amazing. place. Um, because I was so lonely and I was like, wait, man, I'm not the first person to have a child. Let me see what other people are saying about their experiences. Yeah. And then I went online and I found that there was actually parenting communities, even mm. in South Africa. I was shocked yeah. <laughs> at that time a couple of years ago when I was also quite new to yeah. social media. Like parenting is really just this constant of just always being busy. Mm. You're always busy doing something and the older they get, you think you'll get less busy and it actually just goes and goes and goes and goes. So that, that work-life balancing is, 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 um, is quite interesting for me. Um, but community, I think that's incredible. I've mm. Like I said, I've met amazing women that I have now can engage with yeah. um, and ask a question to. And I think that's an interesting one where mental health is concerned, Yarius, because there's really no shame mm. in saying my name is Karabo and sometimes I get depressed. Like, I think I felt so brave mm. um, having to share that I went to a mental health um, wellness center because I had hit rock bottom with a major depressive episode um, be it, and it happened during my second pregnancy and um, it was right after we had lost um, our child and that one hit me like a ton of bricks mm. because I was already working in the parenting space and I was writing mm. and I knew one in four women mm. um, will lose a child you know um, and I loved sharing stories of women that go through loss because mm. loss is loss, grief is grief. But I could understand how complex it is when you just find out you're pregnant and you lose mm. this life. And it's so complex because you don't know if your grief is valid mm. because you're like, was it even a life? Was it not? So that makes it so much more complicated. And for me, it hit me like a ton of bricks because it like re-triggered my own grief trauma. So carrying um, my youngest uh, pregnancy was so difficult because now on a daily basis, I am dealing with the fear of potentially losing this life because I have, right? Yeah. So I have a point of reference of this could end like really badly. So now it's a daily exercise mm -hmm. of trying to navigate through the fear and the anxiety of potentially losing this life. Mm -hmm. And I tried my best. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tried my best because we do that. Yeah. I think there's so many of us that are going through mental health challenges, but mm -hmm. we've all figured out a mask that works for us. Mm -hmm. We've all figured out how to numb the pain, but sometimes you really can't. Mm -hmm. And I hit rock bottom mm -hmm. and I had to make the commitment to actually just take a step back mm -hmm. and it was tough leaving my my youngest at like five months old mm -hmm. it felt so unfair mm -hmm. that you are failing your children I'm like actually I'm failing my children by continuing to pretend mm -hmm. that I'm okay when I'm actually not so it was so important for me to be able to make such a huge sacrifice. I mean, it came as a shock when I had to tell my husband that, babe, I really think I need this. And he was supportive of it. But can you understand me saying, I'm leaving you with these kids for 21 days? <laughs> he was like, are we doing that? I was like, yeah, we have to. We really have to. And we did. Mm -hmm. And I left there feeling so empowered mm -hmm. because for the first time, I kind of had a mental health vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And I cannot under and underestimate how important that is to say, oh, that's actually anxiety. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, those are symptoms of depression mm -hmm. because you can't really fight and overcome something that you don't understand. So that's why the information is really so important. And that's why I absolutely love organizations that do mental health work because it, like knowledge is always power and that education is always so important. Um, how did you manage um, when you got your diagnosis about a major depressive episode? Like what kind of things help you um, go through your day to day? Because you learn that it's actually a day at a time. <laughs> so how do you go through your days? Yeah, one of the things that we also learned is that we, we actually have very poor um, emotional vocabulary. Mm. We don't have a very clear understanding. We, mm. we very surface level of I'm angry, I'm upset. Oh. Oh. Uh, we, we don't really understand when we say I'm angry, what am I actually feeling? Mm. And that was one of the things that we, we really di dived into is to mm. fully identify mm. when I say, hey, I'm, I'm not feeling great today. What does that mean? Yeah. What are we actually talking about? Mm. When I say I'm happy, 
what does it mean? Are you playful? Are you joyful? Are you excited? Are you hopeful? What, what exactly are you saying when you, when you say that? So we started a, a bit of a thing where between myself and wife, my wife, we constantly pointed back to that of saying, hey, what, is, what are we actually feeling today? Mm. So we, we made a point of asking that question mm. to each other on a, on a regular basis because it, it helped us to say, where are you actually at today? Mm. Because I, it's easy to, I'm in a good mood yeah. So you assume yeah, your partner yeah, is going to be yeah. in. And when you're in that mental health challenge space, you you find yourself in some ways feeling guilty mm. when, when your partner's not and you're feeling, hey, I'm feeling great today. Mm. But identifying where you are. So I think we actually cannot underestimate the power that physical um, training exercise can actually do for you when mental health is concerned. Um, and I could understand that sometimes it's tough, right? Like I started sharing content about mental health tools that people could use. Um, and I'm like, oh, but it's so, uh, what works for me really can't work for you. But when it comes to physical exercise, I think it can really work for everyone. I think it really should be sold yeah. as something that is actually a lot more valuable um, and essential for your mental health yeah. more than it does for your body so for me my thing is actually physically going to the gym um, I, I, I'm a total sloth when I'm at home so <laughs> I gotta get out so actually going to the yeah. gym already makes me feel so proud mm. you know mm. life in general is like really tough mm. and then you add children onto that and then it's like a whole big responsibility and we have to be so intentional about taking care of ourselves because I think one of the most profound things I learned um, when I was admitted was that um, we really are taught as women that motherhood is this constant self-sacrifice. Mm. You have to give of mm. yourself to other mm. people and then you do it mm. and then you give mm. and you give mm. and you give mm. and then you start feeling a little groggy, mm. a little mm. tired and yeah. then you're like, oh wait, I'm yeah. burnt out. Yeah. Actually, I've given a little too much and I actually forgot that I'm also a person and I also have to give to myself. Mm. So I also have to learn what it looks like to mm. love myself. So for me, what it looks like to love myself is to say, eh, I can see there's dishes there and I can see there's <laughs> that, but I have to go to the gym, I'll be back. <laughs> you know. So it looks like that for me to say there's, there's certain things that are like a non-negotiable for me that I have yeah. to fit into my day mm. or else I know it's going to be trouble. Yeah, yeah I, th I think you, you hit the nails right on the head of the reality of we can only be the best for our kids mm. if we are in our best position yeah, or best yeah. version of ourselves. Yeah. And we'll never reach that fully mm. in terms of being the best version of ourselves. But yeah. there, there's certain things that we can do to get there. There's mm. certain things that we that helps us to, to be on that journey. Mm. And one of the things for, for me particularly was I, I really enjoy being around people. Mm. Like it's really one of the things that I find a lot of joy in and just spending time with people, getting to know their stories. And one of the things that I found very complex was when we had a boy, and he's four, 15 months now, 14, 15 months, but that journey, uh, you often would hear about moms and the groups that they can go to with their little ones. Mm. My, my wife, after her journey, she went to one of two of these things. And I, I said, to her, I would love to go yeah. find a place where I can go yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And it didn't exist. Yeah. So I either had to go to these existing ones and sit with a bunch of moms. And I, I thought, this is going to be a bit weird. Yeah. But so I'm going to say, well, okay. And I, I had a, one or two conversations with other guys and, and they said the same thing. Mm. And so we, we just started this, this group called yeah. Dads with Prams. And, and what it basically just is, is it's a bunch of dads that walk together mm. on a Friday morning. And we get together, we, we laugh, we pl tell stories, we, we tease each other on what, uh, which wife or send what with this week. Did you bring the diaper yeah. bag? Did you remember the milk? <laughs> all of yeah. these different things. So all of these fun things and really make make it a bit lighthearted in a way that we are able to just be together with yeah. dads that, that have the desire to be out, yeah. but not limited to what they are able to do with yeah. their kids. So I want to commend you on Dads with Prams because 
uh, traditionally there's a lot of men and women that still feel like parenting is just a woman's job. So some fathers are babysitting their kids instead of taking care of my kids. I tell you, it's such a difficult part with mental health is concerned, right? Because as as a as a woman, you end up feeling a lot of resentment. I promise you, because you feel like your life is changing so much, and a lot of the work is your work. And you're like, wait, it didn't. I didn't make this baby by myself. Um, mm -hmm. And why am I? Why do I feel like I'm raising the child by myself? Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it that I have mm -hmm. to take care of this whole human being by myself? Why am I taking up the big responsibility? Mm -hmm. So you guys going out and spending time with your children, just fostering that mm -hmm. relationship that a lot of us also don't have. I don't have a relationship with my father. I think mm -hmm. there's so many of us in this country that have mm -hmm. had really difficult relationships with, mm -hmm. with their fathers. Mm -hmm. So I think you guys are just really breaking mm -hmm. cycles mm -hmm. and really educating and empowering a different generation of fathers to say, mm -hmm. we can do this work mm -hmm. too. Just because we don't have boobs doesn't mean that we can't take care of our kids. You know, that's not the only thing it takes. Even, even just the concept of provision, mm -hmm. because traditionally mm -hmm. the father is the provider, yeah. but we've been come to think yeah. that just it's financial provision mm -hmm. and no other provision. And there's so much more. There's the security and mm -hmm. the safety and that requires time. So we really need to get fathers to spend time with um, mm -hmm. with their children. But I also think one, one, one thing that's also incredible is the vulnerability that mm -hmm. exists in that kind of space. Mm -hmm. Because I'm assuming that if you guys are really having conversations about fatherhood, mm -hmm. then you guys are having really important mm -hmm. discussions around fatherhood and being able to just admit that, oh, I'm actually struggling with this. Mm -hmm. or I actually don't know this. How are you doing this? You know, yeah. how, how are we able? Because there's a lot of shame. Like there's so much shame that I'm really hoping we can mm -hmm. just unburden ourselves off to just be able to say I'm struggling with one two three how are you doing it and we can relate to each other because we are relational beings we are brought here to interact mm -hmm. with each other and learn from each other so how's that space been like for you when learning is is concerned are you finding that you're having brave dads mm -hmm. that are being are able to be vulnerable in conversation yeah I I think the the reality is is very much like you you said is that it's very seldom that you would find a, a space where men are able to be vulnerable. Mm. But I, in my experience in this space have been men are vulnerable with other men. Mm. But it, it really requires somebody to to be the icebreaker and say, mm. hey, I'm going to push into this space. Mm. I'm going to be the, the mm. guy that's going to challenge myself. Yeah, right. And it really required me to become vulnerable. Mm. Um, where I had to ask myself the question, what is the level of vulnerability that I needed to have and mm. that I wanted because it will only be matched based on what my vulnerability is. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole idea and concept around fathers being only good for a certain portion of it yeah. is one of the things that also challenged me, mm -hmm. is that in today's world, my wife and I are working. Mm -hmm. we, we both were living a similar life. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't seem fair to me to assume she needs to continue working and she needs to take on yeah. all the responsibility yeah. of, of being a mom, mm. being the parent, doing that. Mm. There were certain things that had to come my way. Mm. And we ha had to figure out what that looks like. We're still figuring out what yeah. it looks like. It's a daily yeah, yeah, question yeah, that you're asking. Yeah. I think in the space of vulnerability as a, as a man, it really forced me to be in that space. And then when, it, when we start having conversations, you start realizing that men actually face things that are challenging, mm. but because of what they've been taught, because of how you are perceived when you are vulnerable, you you tend to be very careful of how you share, where you share, who mm. you share with. Mm. Um, so in my space, it's been a thing of, I had to really understand who, who can I share with? Mm. And is my vulnerability gonna be met with vulnerability? Mm. Because it, when it wasn't, I was like, well, what, what is this? Mm. then four what are we having a conversation about how mm. i'm struggling and you're just showing to me that you've built these incredible walls around your palace mm. but there isn't actually a palace behind those walls mm. so they, there's definitely a space of vulnerability that that dads have but what i also realized for me what was very important is that my wife actually helped me become more vulnerable mm. she was one of the in key draw cards into that space because I could see the stuff that she was going through mm. and as she was processing stuff I had to process stuff mm. and what I've realized a lot of the time as, as well is that we as men are told to be strong 
we live in this be strong culture mm. and I had to break down that culture within myself yeah. because through that mm. I was able to become more vulnerable not just with other men but with my wife I was being a I was able to be vulnerable with my boy that's not understanding me yet yeah. but I could engage with him better because yeah. I was like, hey, I'm really struggling today. Mm. Like, but how are we going to do this? Yeah. How are we going to make, yeah. make this work? Yeah. I was able to call on friends and say, hey guys, today is a, a tough day. Yeah. Like, can we, can I bring him with, let's just go for a walk. Mm. And some friends would just phone, phone me and say, hey, we coming, we looking after him. You guys mm. disappear for an hour or two. Mm. And it was really through that, that the walls of vulnerability started mm. breaking down. And I, I really, believe women play a specific significant role in how husbands or their partners would be able to become vulnerable mm. and th it's a slow journey but it is possible mm. and you as a wife and as a, w a woman in that space i really believe there's an important role that women play mm. in ha helping men understand mm. that vulnerability is okay yeah. and it is a good place for us to be because it's not just for you it is for for us as a family yeah. it is for your child it is for their future it's for what they're going to experience yeah. it's your vulnerability sets them up mm -hmm. to be confident to be courageous to be able to step into their purpose in life mm -hmm. confidently yeah. because they're seeing mom and dad mm -hmm. living a life that is saying hey we know we're flawed. We know we have problems. Yeah. We know we have challenges. Yeah. We know there's stuff that we're struggling with. But we're not going to hide it. Mm -hmm. We're going to show it to you. Mm -hmm. and, but we're not just going to show it to you. We're going to work on it. We're going to try and yeah. do better. Yeah. And it might take a long time. Mm -hmm. It might cause a lot of pain initially. Yeah. But eventually, there's a lot of beauty that comes out of it. Yeah. There's such incredible stories mm -hmm. that come through vulnerability. Yeah. Um, I can attest to that. I think it requires a lot of vulnerability mm. to create community. Mm. Um, and I think that's a beautiful perspective to wow. um, just stand in my power as mm. a woman to be able to support the men in my life, to be able to acknowledge mm. um, where they need to up their game of vulnerability is right. concerned because they're also breaking cycles. Mm. They didn't grow up seeing their fathers yeah. doing that. And I'm excited mm. for your son to be yeah. able to see because... I think it's a, it's incredible because kids grow up mm -hmm. and they get to see that oh you're actually just a human being yeah. <laughs> you know and then and then that's where the relationship can potentially get messy because what I was trying to sell versus who I am mm. can be such different different, different things so I, we really need to learn yeah. to be vulnerable with our kids and I think that's really my last message man I think it's so important to have a community um a community around us whether it's mm. your online community whether it's your uh, dads exactly. riding around in prams yeah. whether it's your church community whether it's your yoga community or your gym community really just find a person or people that you are able to trust yeah. um, with every single thing that you, you you're able to just kind of give to them mm -hmm. um, and they'll be able to see you and guide you um, and help you be able to just reconnect with yourself you know when you when you're feeling anxious about something um, who is in your people toolkit you know yeah. We, yeah. we spoke about that mental health yeah. toolkit but who's in your people toolkit yeah. where you can open up and say actually this is a person mm -hmm. who I know if I can talk yeah. to right now even in the state that I'm in right now struggling as I am I'm able to say listen I'm not okay right now can I mm -hmm. see you can we meet up can we talk um, and you know that they will love you right back so yeah. it's such an incredible time today um, chatting with you Karabo. I really appreciate you and your time today spending with me and talking about the space of mental health yeah. as parents and, yeah. and so on. Yeah. No, thank you for your openness and sharing your story. I think it's always incredible to have a mental health conversation mm. from a dad's perspective. Mm. Um, because it also helps me bring yeah. it together for me and my home as well. Speaking of professionals, we have a registered psychological counsellor, Trisha Moodley, Amazing. who's been listening into our conversation and is going to reflect it back to us with some professional insights. Let's watch. Thank you, Karabo and Yarias. I'm Trisha Moodley. I'm a registered psychological counsellor, and I can tell you that this is the most crucial conversation to have in our society today, as we all um, as parents navigate the challenges of having kids and fusing that with our professional responsibility as well as our personal life, trying to make it work and ensure that our kids are okay in the process. But do we ever ask ourselves, how are we doing? Because I notice a lot of the time we are so focused on our children 
Karabo, as you beautifully shared and courageously shared, um, Darius as well, navigating parenthood and trying to juggle the challenges that you've experienced, Karabo experiencing grief throughout your life and bringing that into what motherhood means, and Yarius finding um, every medical and ethical challenge that your wife and you faced, and how do you become the dad that suddenly have to handle everything and manage everything. One of the things that I've heard come out consistently throughout this uh, engagement is there is no template as parents and I'm here to endorse that. You will never get a template to say you are ready to be a parent. I wish we actually had that, that we could get our learner's license and our license to be able to drive a car and to be able to get that as parents because as a therapist and in my past, I, I was also a teacher for 26 years. So I've seen it all, experienced it all with children and families and I can tell you we don't get a license to become a parent. But the best book, there is a book and there is a template out there. And I'm going to share that with you today. And I hope you really take this very seriously. The book is entitled, Your Child. It is your child that you need to read, right? So in Karabo's case, Karabo, you read Timor and Asante. Yarius, you read Elijah. Look at their expressions, look at their moods. And once you understand how to read them, everything from nonverbal to verbal, it sort of helps us to emotionally regulate as parents. Being a parent myself, I've had to understand that I've got my own schema and where I come from, a frame of reference, my context, my family background, and to try and make sure that I don't impose that as a teacher and now as a re registered psychological counselor onto my children, because it is unfair. The way we were raised as parents and well, our parents raised us as, as children, preparing us for adulthood in a society, did not prepare us for today's world that we are raising our kids, where they have the world in the palm of their hands. So my take on that is, to help us navigate and emotionally regulate. Let's start with ourselves as parents, as adults, our self-development. So when we focus on our self-development, it really isn't about creating that to-do list that we need every single day. How about starting with a to-be list? Who do you want to be in your sense of self? And create a personal list, a to-be list, and create a professional to-be list and then create your parent-to-be list. And make sure that if you are parenting with your partner, that you both are on the same page when it comes to what you wish to achieve with your children and, and raising this family. That is a massive tool that I'm hoping Karabu can also explore that in her blogs more. And yes, Yarius, you are spot on. We're going to get her to write that book eventually. So conscious parenting, what it actually means in a nutshell, practically, is being grounded. And I'd love to take conscious parenting to the next level and say conscious everything, being mindful, being grounded in your sense of self to say, I'm here, I'm present. And this is all I can do right now is try to read my child, try to understand that I'm being triggered. And as Karabo mentioned as well, she questions the triggers. Yarius spoke about self-care. That's another incredibly important tool. And he's mentioned that self-care means exercising for him and running. Please find a way in your life to measure what success means to you, what self-care means to you, and become more self-more as opposed to self-less. That is an indoctrination in our society as parents. Also incredible is the community building, having your support systems and reaching out to them constantly and ultimately seek professional help. Find us, make sure you make those appointments and you ask those questions because vulnerability is all about courage because courage is C-O-R, which is inside that word and C-O-R is a Latin word for heart. So give courage to your heart stories and that in, in essence is being vulnerable in a very courageous platform. Thank you very much guys and well done on this wonderful initiative.